Hello everybody, it's Graham Cove with another My Music. It's the wonderful Wednesday, uh, it's hump day, which means that you can stop working already. Uh, it doesn't matter, it's uh, 10 o'clock, uh, which is uh, time to put the kettle on, really. Um, mine's a cup of tea. Uh, Lil, what are you having? I was just having some water. because There's some water. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll come back uh, as soon as you've made our drinks for us and uh, we'll be talking to Leah about uh, her music, etc. So first of all, though, we're going to have a video from the wonderful Analog Trash who sponsor this uh, mess that I do every, every day. And uh, please take note. <laughs> There, you never get sick and tired of watching that video. Uh, if you haven't checked out the website yet, why not? Uh, because otherwise, you know, what's the point of me showing it every single time? How are you? I am are really you? good. Good. Where are you coming from? Where am I coming from? What, right yeah. now? <laughs> yeah, right now. Right now. <laughs> Where, which part of the country are you in? Um, I'm in London. So right. I'm in northwest London, actually. So Lovely. kind of around like the Camden, like past Camden kind of area. Nice, very nice. Yeah, yeah. Is Cam Camden your local shopping area? Um, Not really, actually. I don't go to Camden that often, which is, which is surprising, but yeah, don't really oh, get right. time to wander around much. Have you ever played it and never played a gig? Camden oh, in Camden, and... yeah, multiple times, multiple times. Wonderful. There you go. Of course. Camden is the place to be. It, well, it is, yeah. Um, you might yeah. see uh, le later on this afternoon in Camden for the first time in ages buying buying something to eat. Uh, if you do, yeah, say yeah. hello because you now know her almost in a in a kind of way. Had, when did you first start making music? Gosh, um, I actually grew up in in Austria in the middle of nowhere. Um, wow. Yeah, and I only moved to London like three and a half years ago to do music, and before yeah. that, I lived in Austria for my entire life, really. So I kind of started making music. I don't know, Austria is really weird because like the music industry is tiny and really it's like condensed down to like traditional Austrian music, classical Lots music. Lots of yodeling. Style. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, not really. I mean, yes, but no, not that much. Um, but yeah, so I kind of started making music, I guess, by by starting to sing when I was like six and I was we had like a school choir. So I kind of slipped into that by accident because one of my friends were ill um and then my singing teacher was just like can you sing these lines so I did and then she I think saw my talent and then said that she'll give me solo lessons so she kind of just started teaching me and then I had vocal lessons for like I don't know 12 years of my life past wow. that so yeah it's like pretty a, like a long career in singing but then yeah I started playing in different instruments played the violin and flute and all kinds of things and then kind of fell out of love with that because I wasn't good enough <laughs> so all the kids started much earlier than me of uh, playing violin and stuff and I was actually obsessed with classical music before I got into any pop kind of stuff um but yeah then started playing the guitar and uh yeah started writing my own songs um when I was like 12 and then um, I did an exchange year when I was 16 in the South of England um, in Bexhill on Sea, which oh, lovely. lovely. So nice. So I was there for 10 months and like kind of, yeah, just wanted to learn English properly and wanted to experience different culture and stuff. So I did my AES levels there and um, kind of got into performing more. And then after those 10 months, went back to Austria, did my A levels in Austria, but also started busking, gigging loads um, in my hometown. I mean, there's not that many places to gig, but I gigged as much as I could, which was probably like a couple of times every month, which was nice. And then just decided that I wanted to like do something with music. I really wanted to be a songwriter. So I went on lots of different retreats and stuff like that to kind of learn the craft a bit more. And then decided that maybe I wanted to study music as well. So I was looking around music courses around Europe and stuff. and just decided that actually the place where I felt like I could be most myself um, and that also has the industry for the kind of music I make was London. So I then decided to move, 
did a course in music business at the Notting Hill Academy of Music for like a year just before lockdown happened and then yeah just been doing music full-time ever since so yeah it's just releasing writing and stuff like that gigging that's a whirlwind through your life so far (sighs) yeah it's been pretty crazy to be fair like so I I mean you know you said at a young age you, you tried violin and flute I mean you know you gravitated towards the, the difficult instrument straight away, which mm. is <laughs> always, well, not always. I mean, you you know, you could be an absolute genius on those things, but mm. for a lot of us, they're very off-putting. Mm. Did, they, did they nearly put you off music? Yeah, I think like there was a time, even when I started playing guitar, where I didn't want to learn guitar anymore, because the only reason why I wanted to learn guitar is so I could accompany myself singing. Yeah. Um, and at some point I got really frustrated because my guitar teacher kept trying to teach me these classical guitar pieces and I was like, I can't be bothered, this is so boring. Um, and uh, I actually told my mum, I was like, Mum, I don't want to go anymore. And she was like, No, you gotta go for another half year because I'm paying I'm paying for this. So you go for another half year and then if you still don't like it, you can quit. So I did it for another half year and that was the time when I fell in love with it. So I guess props to my mum because otherwise I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now if she hadn't like almost like dragged me to lessons for another half year. But um, Did you borrow, by the way, when you were learning uh, violin and flute? Oh yeah, borrow- of course, borrow- yeah, 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 we did not have the money to have paid for a real violin, absolutely not. Yeah, oh, no, I just, I I just really wonder whether you violin. still had them around in the background. Oh, and, I know. wish. I wish. No, I've got loads of guitars, like one <laughs> plus one. I, I'm confused with the directions, but yeah, one over there. But then I've got like six more over here <laughs> as well. So yeah, quite funny. But um, yeah, I wish I, I wish I'd stuck to it with violin. Actually, it's such a beautiful instrument. I was always just so touched by it. Um, and the sounds that it makes but yeah I just started too late I started when I was 10 and then everyone in my group was six and played twice as well as me and yeah I think I just yeah just didn't like it in the end it was too much too much practice um, whereas guitar was quite easy to like play a few chords quite quickly and then just got into that so I mean we joked earlier uh, about Austrian music but I mean growing up yeah in that environment what were you listening to? I mean, you said classical music. I mean, yeah. my only experience of Austria is I went there when I was really young. Yeah. Um, and I did a lot of walking. I think I actually got my my bronze badge for walking. Wow. Um, yeah, in, in Austria. Um, and I remember being serenaded every night in this hotel by this. He could be a legend, so I don't want to put him down. But Collie, the singing chef. Um <laughs> Never who played who played traditional Austrian music and yodeled a lot. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, it, was it? It's. It, I mean, it's definitely what were like you inspired by. I was not inspired by any of that. Um, not the traditional no. side of things, but I was, like I said, really into classical music. So I was like obsessed with Mozart, Bach, Beethoven. Like I would literally listen to that on repeat. Like I knew all the different melodies and the different pieces and like um the different operas and like all of that stuff like I was actually obsessed with classical music I go to classical concerts all the time as well and like I was just I was just really into it and my mum was really into it as well because that would be like the rate the classic FM Austria radio station I guess um yeah the equivalent of that was like my mum's favorite radio station actually put on as well when, when she was driving us to school and stuff like that so I did listen to a lot of that um and yeah then as I stopped playing those instruments and kind of grew up a bit more because like I don't know like growing up all obviously all my friends were into like I don't know what was in at the time and like Austria's music industry is quite weird like we get a lot of mixture of stuff Mm. but it's all very delayed in terms of like the trends like when I don't know if it's popular in in London now it's probably not going to be popular over there for the next three to six months like it's really slow so I feel like, yeah, when all my friends then got into like Adele and like all of those artists at first, I was like, oh, no, that's bullshit. Like, I love classical music. This pop stuff is not real music. Like, ugh. but then I got really into it, I think, when I was probably like, yeah, 11 or something. And what was the, um, what was the turning point then for you? What what convinced you that actually there was life beyond classical music? I don't really know, to be honest. I think it was just a peer pressure of having to listen to certain things and then, you know, hanging out with friends and them showing me new stuff. And I used to like, 
well when I used to like learn guitar and stuff it was like well you can't learn a classical classical piece on guitar so you'll have to like you know you'll have to you'll have to learn some pop songs and like we'll we'll teach you some pop songs so I think that's kind of how I got into it more and then my my oldest childhood friend from home as well his dad had like a an audio interface and stuff like that so we'd then like play play the covers of songs and he, he somehow managed to work out how garage band works and so we were like recording stuff in my bedroom and stuff like that so I guess that's how I kind of got more into it and then I mean my mum did play stuff around the house like she played like lots of Nirvana and Barbara Streisand and then she was like also quite uh, hang on hang on hang on a minute hang on she played Nirvana and Barbara Streisand. I know Streisand. it's very like... that's great isn't it <laughs> very like different I expect to see I expect to see somebody doing a mashup of Barbra Streisand yeah and, I know and right later today. <laughs> yeah it's quite funny I mean uh, also like I, I do remember a lot of Jack Johnson in my childhood which is a weird random artist but like I love her stuff um but yeah I think that's also one that I remember from my childhood and my mum was also obsessed with David Bowie and stuff like that but she'd never like sit me down and be like listen to this piece of music how amazing is it she never like introduced me to it like that it was kind of on in the background and like I was really intrigued by it but she'd always take me to more classical concerts like I was like 16 by the time I went to my first ever like proper gig gig um mm. because my are parents you quite pleased that that's the way she concert. did it I am actually because I do think that it gave me like hearing all those complex melodies helped me with my melody writing as I do it now and I think that's where maybe some of my melodies sound un un more unique than some other pop songs that you hear out there um, but yeah I think it, it taught me so much about like different melodies different structures and just like you know the emotion that that music conveys I think as well it's like powerful and like if you can evoke that with a pop song then that's great it's like teaches you a lot about that I think um yeah, yeah so I'm, I'm grateful for my mum introducing me so much into classical music and stuff and I still love it up to this day I listen to a lot of classical music so yeah it's nice but she, but she also that. subconsciously sort of introduced you to other music but of without course yeah no she was yeah, she was always really cool. And to be fair, like my dad, my dad was never really that much into music. So I think that was also why I think if my dad had been into music or different kinds of music, it would have been different. But he very much isn't really a music listening person. He likes audiobooks and he love go loves going to gigs. And he's obviously a big fan of my music. <laughs> but like, it's not like he would show me music either. So I didn't really have many people showing me music, music, like not, not as I think there's like a much bigger culture in the UK for like, you know, your legacy acts that you're like oh I need to get my kid into this that wasn't yeah really no no there is there's there's definitely that um Andrew reminded us all of uh the wonderful Falco with Rock Me Amadeus oh the, yeah 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 Australian Falco artist, like of all the time. Only artist I think that ever made it out of Boston really <laughs> properly besides Mozart I'm gonna have that song stuck in my head all day now though that's exactly. the only problem because it is a bit of an earworm um yeah and and after we mentioned Barbara Streisand and Nirvana, he can't wait to hear Pearl Jam mashed with Barry Manilow. <laughs> yeah, oh my God, imagine. I really don't think so. <laughs> well, I don't think so. No. So someone someone out there could do it. Um, you know, that it's all very clever, all of those mashups that people pull out of the of the woodwork. Yeah, exactly. I, in terms of when you started to develop your own sound. Yeah, because um, you you can hear that you can hear a classical element to mm. what what you do. Um, what was your overriding, you know, process in in terms of starting to write? Because your words are very powerful as well. Do do mm. you write those words first? Do you have those words first and then put to to the melody? I know it sounds mm -hmm. like it's a cliche kind of question, yeah, but no. for you, I feel that it's it's quite important because or is it does it develop together yeah um it's an interesting one because before I even wrote songs I was writing like novels and like short stories and poems and stuff like that when I was like I don't even even like once I could write I wrote um and I think yeah, I think that kind of power of like songwriting really, I love that because it could mean I could write a story, but I would have music alongside it. And I think that's what always pulled me to with songwriting is it's like, oh, you can get the emotion across even better than if you if you wrote a book because you've got the music helping it tell the story. 
and that's why I kind of got obsessed with and in terms of my process I think it's always different I think every song has got a different process it's like yeah I don't know it's like having lots of different children it's like they're all similar but they they are all different in their personalities and yeah um, I think how how they come about and stuff so and they all come to the dinner table at different times in different <laughs> ways yeah Probably. that's a great that's a great yeah, way. well it's true it's true I've got five yeah. children and, and that is true that's how that's how it happens it is true that's how for a lot of musicians that is how music comes because I mean are you a are you a geek when it comes to to music uh sort of making as well I mean do, do you find that actually you can get excited by a new guitar or by, by oh, a new yeah, piece of definitely. kit yeah. I do love a bit. I do love a bit of kit. Um, however, like I feel like, yeah, I don't know. I've kind of almost outgrown that phase because I own everything now I need, and it's expensive, and yeah. uh, it's nice to just have the have your go to stuff. I think I quite enjoy just being like, oh, you know, I've had this guitar since I was like eighteen, and I still love it, and it's great. Um, so yeah, I don't know, but yeah, I do. I do think every song comes across like or comes out of myself in different ways so yeah but it, it's it's a it's always a different process but I usually just start with a line or a thought a feeling that I then put into just a line that I then write a song about mm. and then sometimes you know with with empath my most recent single I think it definitely came very much from like a very honest like point of myself where I just felt very drained by a friend of mine and just constantly putting all all her feelings <laughs> in 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 our relationship and just making it all about herself and her feelings and didn't really ask me how I was and like you know took up a lot of space and um having to feel responsible for her feelings and stuff like that so that's kind of where that song came from but then I finished it off with my friend Blake Densmore who's um this Nashville songwriter and he's so amazing and we zoom over once in a while and we were just talking about the feeling and I was like hang on actually I've got the song that I wrote ages ago um, so we listened to it and he was like, this is, this is great. Let's just change a couple lines. And then I took it into the studio to work with my mate Duncan on it. Um, Brookfield, he's my producer. Um, and yeah, that's kind of how, how that song came about, but it's yeah, different. For I, I really love the song. I mean, it, 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 in terms of the video as well, you, you produce that video. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're, so you're, you're, you're I quite, video. quite keen on being visual as well. Yeah. I'm a very visual person. Like for me, music and film kind of, come together like that like I've I've actually not since last year released ever released any songs that didn't have a music video or at least like a little visual because it's so important for me to get the message across visually like it's so nice and satisfying for me to have a project that gets the message across visually like unconsciously to the listener um and I guess the the audience that watches the video as well um and yeah I, I just I, I just love directing music videos it's one of my favorite things actually about the music creation process like yeah making DEP amazing but almost as satisfying as like creating all the videos for it and like the visuals for it um where, so, did, yeah. where did the the wall idea come from um it was trying to like basically we filmed six videos in three days <laughs> which was like very full-on as a theme wow five, a theme of that's five mad months. Yeah, there's a team of five of us, um, five amazing women who I'm good friends with, and we just decided to do it in, in three days. Well, I made them do it in three days because I was like, we got to get this done. Um, mm. But yeah, I, I just wanted to find a way to show how feelings can be very like, they can almost like, I don't know, just make you feel really like angsty and like feel like pushed into a certain space when you don't yeah. really want to be there but then also how people's emotions just like affect you a lot. So I think I guess I really wanted to get that feeling across of, you know, feeling like you're just really like sucked in by someone else's stuff and you don't have any space to like be yourself because you just like, ugh, like get off me. But at the same time, I can't move anymore because you've literally just like put all your stuff on Suffocated me. Suffocated you almost. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Suffocating me with your feelings and stuff. So yeah, I really wanted to get that across and thought of many different ideas, but that was the one that pretty stuck out that made the most sense and was realistic within the time frame as well. I love the the way actually as well on social media that the way that you use that to give little bits of that song over and over again just to yeah. to, to 
all, almost in a suffocating way, which actually <laughs> kind of fitted with the song, which I thought was really yeah. good. Was that on purpose or? I think so. I think I'm quite, I'm a, I'm quite strategic. Uh, how do you say it? Strategic. You know what strategic? I mean. Strategic. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, strategic. Um, about my my content and social media. Um, like I, I do feel like these days you must have to be as an independent musician. Like you're not really gonna build your audience unless you post a lot. And you know, some some people see all my posts, but maybe only like five percent of them see all of them. Like, so it's important to like keep posting so you can reach as many people as possible. Um, but yeah, no, I do, I do really actually like creating content. I know most artists really hate it, but I actually quite like it. <laughs> I think it's important, you know, um, you can't really survive in the world these days without it because it's part and yeah. parcel of how you get your message out there and, and how, yeah. you, you know, you feed, feed the audience. I mean, literally, the thing is with distribution now is that the distribution model is in a way easy because mm. you can just stream music. So, you know, literally press a button, upload your music to a, to a platform and there it is so every, yeah. everybody can have it but you've got to get people to that you know so you've yeah. got to cut across the noise how do you cut across the so noise you've got, you've, got, yeah. you've got to have a strategy for that yeah you do yeah it's quite important it days. is so what is it what are your recent ambitions or what, what where are you going in terms of uh the music now are you are you very much going to be focus song by song in terms of the way that you develop your craft or or you know is there an album in there yeah so uh, the project I'm working on currently on releasing um is going to be out in November and it's going to be an EP um right. which I'm very excited for it's going to be my third EP which is quite crazy actually to think about because I've done so many now um but yeah no I'm very excited for that so that's that's kind of happening this year and then I'm also going to be going on tour a lot so I'm going on tour in May, so next month. I'm going to do um, Newcastle, Birmingham, Manchester, Brighton, Bristol, London, and Newcastle, actually, as well. Um, I'm glad to hear that South West is included in that list. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm going to do that. And um, then I'm going on tour again in Europe in um, October, November time as well. And yeah that's kind of going to be my year like it's a lot to do a lot of lot of touring a lot of releasing it's, it's quite time consuming so I think that's that's going to be the, the plan for the year but yeah so far things are going really well much better than I expected actually so that's really nice and um yeah I'm just very very excited to see you know what's going to happen next year and whatnot so yeah we'll see given the fact that you are keeping a close eye on your social media etc are, are you happily surprised by the response from people out there to your music are you are you yeah, building sure. are you building that empathy with your, yeah for sure I feel like you know I make music because for me it's like therapy and it's a, like an important way of sharing my story with the world but nothing literally nothing compares to the feeling that you know you get when someone actually connects with what mm. you put out there and like the messages I've had from people for empath because they listened and they said oh my god I related to this so much or you know this made me cry so much or whatever and like that, nothing compares to that feeling so I think that's also one of the main reasons why I make music is because I love connecting with people and making people feel like you know they're, they're seen and they're not alone and like everyone feels like that sometimes and stuff like that so yeah I think yeah really really powerful and it's been really nice to, to see people's responses and um yeah just feel like I can make a difference you know I think it's mm. a nice feeling so, so we should expect in terms of your songwriting over this next EP we should expect all of it to be quite raw and honest oh yeah 100 percent. I feel like that's my trademark these days as well even if you listen to my last EP that I released in November um called survival mode like same on that one very raw and honest songs and same with this new EP um yeah, I'm very, very excited for those songs. I'm very proud of each of one of them. And they're all very similar, but also very different. So, um, yeah, I'm very excited for it. I wish I could tell you more, but... <laughs> you can't. You not can't. Yet. Not yet. Um, yeah. But, yeah, well, definitely. Like, what you can tell people is 
if they haven't listened to your music yet, where mm. they can go and listen to it. I mean, obviously yeah. it's on it's on the streaming platforms, but where would you prefer people to come just so that you can build more of a connection with them? Yeah. I mean, I'd love for you to go and listen on Spotify and just Leah G. Um, but you can you can find my Instagram if you want to connect or chat or see all of my content that Graham just talked about as well. Then you can find me um, at Leah underscore G underscore music. Remember that Leah is not spelled with the H. I keep having to remind people of that because <laughs> most Leahs are spelled with a H. Um, and then, yeah, check out my music videos if you're into nice visuals. Um, they're all very cool to watch. I'm really proud of them. So if you want to find them, you can go to YouTube and just type in Leah G and you can find all of my music videos that I've done up to this date. And uh, yeah, if you're a TikTok person, you can find me on TikTok because of course I'm on there. Everyone's on there <laughs> these days. Um, so yeah, you can find me everywhere. And yeah, like let me know if you want to chat about anything. Like I'm I'm usually online quite a lot anyway. So if you if you have any thoughts or you want to just chat about stuff. Um, oh, there you are. Look, you've just been added to a Spotify playlist. Oh, amazing. Thank you so much, um, Andrew. And uh, Pauline says, don't forget New Zealand. Well, oh, I mean, that... well, I'd love to come down there if you want to book me a tour. <laughs> I was <laughs> going to say, if, if someone wants to find a sponsor uh, out in exactly. New Zealand to, to get you over oh, there. Great. Yeah. That would be amazing. Can, can you can you sort of make that a holiday at the same time? That would be good. Oh, yeah. 100%. Don't worry. If that happened, I would be down there for two months just <laughs> touring and holidaying. That would be great. Oh, listen, Leah, thanks so much for joining me today. Thank um, you so much, Graham. I hope, really hope you've that. enjoyed your little chat on my music. Um, please, yeah, that was great. people, do check out Leah. Uh, if you... Um, you know, if you if you find her during the day, if you like her music, do comment, do l let other people know because and share this. Not for me, because uh, it's all about the music. It's all about the, the musicians that come on board. We're just here to, to kind of spotlight what amazing talent there is out there and and tell you that, you know, the music uh, these days is just as good as anything you used to have in the 60s and 70s, uh, if, if not better. So, you know, don't don't stop listening to new music all of the time. Um, if you've enjoyed this, this has been my music. I will be back later in the day. Speak to you then. Bye for now. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye bye.